I want to give you three keys to God's divine promotion. All these three things are things that you must do in secret. Amen. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Okay, chapter 6. Now, another way in which promotion could be described is by what we call God taking you forward, lifting you up, moving you ahead from one state to another. Amen. And I'm going to show you from the Bible that there are things that God has said. And whenever you are promoted, people can see. Is that not so? Is that not the nature of promotion? It's something that people can see. All right? So notice chapter, Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Amen. All right? But when thou doest arms, verse 3, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall himself reward thee openly. Amen. So the first key to being promoted is to give and to give consistently in secret. Amen. The Bible says when you give, for men to see, right, you will not have any reward. I'm not trying to make a sermon out of this. I'm just trying to read what I have read. Say what we already says. It says, take heed that you do not do your arms before men to be seen of them. In other words, the motive is to be seen. Not that people, because by all means somebody is going to see. The person who receives it will see it. You get it? Somebody who's going to use the money will see it. That you have given so much money. But the key is very simple. And the key is one of you must not do your giving. Giving of arms is your giving. Giving tithes, offerings, gifts, whatever. Do not do it for people to see. With the aim for people to see that you have given. All right, and if you do that, you lose your reward. I mean, I didn't say it. Amen. I didn't say it. He said, but when you are giving, give privately. Give in secret. He said, do not let even your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that even if your left hand doesn't know what your right hand is doing, your right hand and your left hand are usually together. They are on the same body. And they are always together. So anywhere your right hand is, your left hand is likely to be there. If I'm giving you my Bible, I mean, my right and left hand are always working together. I'm holding my Bible with my right and I pass it to my left. You don't even think about it. You get it? Where's your right hand? Everybody stay where you are. Freeze. Freeze. Where's your right hand? And where's your left hand? Are they close by? Are they together? Some of this one is together. These are together. Together. This is together, together. All, all the time, almost all the time, your right hand is touching your left hand. That shows you how close your right hand is to your left hand. And God is saying that even when you are giving, don't let even your right hand know what your left hand is doing. That means that even to yourself, there must be some secrecy, some privacy. People don't have to see that you are giving before your giving is good? No. God says, do not let your left hand know. Because of that, there are certain things that I do that I am afraid of letting people know about. Amen. There are certain things that I have done that I, I don't mention. Amen. And, and there are things that I, I am involved with that I, I wouldn't talk about. And, and there are times that I would, I would bless somebody and I'll say, listen, 
I don't need you to say all this to the whole world and, and all that. There's no need at all. It's just for you to be blessed. And that's the end of it. But you see, we love for people to praise us and say, yeah, I am the rich man, or I am the person who did that, or some people say, I don't want, I don't want people to know that I'm rich, or, or some people say, I, I, I want even, the, sometimes they even want the pastor to know, so that the pastor knows. I want him to know what I have done. I want him to know my contribution. I, I want them to see that I'm doing something. You know, all they're talking from the pulpit. I want, I want him to know that I am, I am doing my part. You get it? Sometimes we have a feeling like that. And God is saying, listen, he says, you won't have your reward. You will not have your reward. Oh, I want my reward. How many want your reward? Now, what did God say? He said that, do it secretly, and God will reward you openly. Wow! It's better to have an open reward than an open giving. I said, it's better to have an open reward than an open seed sowing time. Because one is going to be open and one is going to be secret. So it's better to have the reward time as a public thing. So God is saying that he will reward you openly. People will see that you are being blessed financially. People will get to know that, man, this brother and this sister, this, he's not easy at all. Because secretly... You have taken money. You have sown seeds. You have paid your tithes regularly. Nobody has to chase you. You know between you and God what you are doing, what you have done, and what you continue to do. That will bring open rewards. And when God is rewarding you openly, oh man, you will like to experience it. God will lift you up. He will exalt your horn. He will establish you. He will do the things that you dream about. He will bring them to pass. And you will experience open rewards. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have a better amen? amen? So I want you to wait and decide to be a private giver. That doesn't mean that when I'm doing fundraising, I say, how many want to give for our bus? Then you say, ah, no, nah, they've told us now we shouldn't raise our hand and so on. For people to see. Yeah, you are not ready. You see, it says you should not give to be known, to be seen. That's not your aim. You are raising your hand so that I can count the people that I've, I've given. Because if I don't see, I don't know whether I've raised them. Because I can just stand here and say, okay, I'm raising 10 million cities in Jesus' name. How many believe it's a good thing? How many will give? Okay, I believe that there are enough people to have given. Amen. That's the end of the fundraising. And I close. But I have to ask one million. How many? Two million. Five hundred thousand. So that I can know that I have achieved what I am trying to achieve. So if you also don't raise your hand, then you are now hindering the, the, the what you call it. Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you look, you see their building, their cars, you see the bridge, donated by Valco, isn't it? Donated by the Japanese government. Donated by the Danish government. You see, in the human world, we want to see and be seen. Donated by, given by, I am the one, I am the one. We are the ones doing the good works. Built by this, donated by this. Is that not so? Don't you have that all the time? They insist on it. Donated by, given by, then by, this by. You don't need that. If you give something that's precious to you, learn to give in secret. Most of the public things that God does are because of some secret thing you did one day. I said most of the public things that God blesses you with are because of some secret thing you did one day. Amen. Don't look to human beings for rewards. If pastor knows what you did, it doesn't help you. Because I, can, I don't promise to be a, a blessing to you, or I don't promise to bless you, to, to give you something after church. No, no, no. And the church does not promise to bless you. The church is not promising you interest. Otherwise, we'll become Piram or uh, one of, what is the other one? Something 95. 
R5. No, that's not what the church is. God is the one who says, give, and it shall be given unto you. So give from today, privately, but give consistently. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give, give your dresses out. Come to church. Those of you, some of you ladies, take your best dress and put it in a bag and bring it to church. Not the one you don't like. Not the one that is faded or the one that is torn or the one that the zip is spoiled or the one that you are too big for or the one that has been inside and cockroach have eaten. The one that you stuck under the bed and on top of the bed and behind. Some of you, your houses are full of rubbish, rubbish. A lot of things are there. You can't eat them. You can't use them. You can't wear them. You'll never wear them again. But you are keeping them. Learn to give. When you give, you'll be more tidy and neat. That's a side effect of giving. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So, number one is give secretly. And God is going to bless you openly. Everybody will see your new car. How I many you know that you can't drive a car in secret? I see you in that beautiful car. Come on now. Number two. Today we have a very simple Bible lesson. Promotion. Amen. Number two. Verse five. And when thou prayest. So the first one is to give in secret. The second one is to pray in secret. Amen. It says, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I, I say unto you, they have their reward. Now he didn't say what their reward was. He said they have their reward. And I don't think it's a very good reward. Verse 6, but thou, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in heaven, which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall do what? Shall reward thee openly. Amen. Pray in secret. In the year 2002, I want to see you pray more in secret than anything else. Some people love prayer meetings. Oh, we are going for a prayer meeting. And when you come for the prayer meeting, Ebaya, Maya, Mabaya, Mabaya. That's the only time you can pray. But God wants you to learn the art of praying privately. You alone and God only. Two of you alone, you and God. You and I alone. Two of us alone. You and I alone. Pray in secret. When you are at a prayer meeting, you are not in secret. If you are in secret, you could take off all your clothes. Oh, you can't take off all your clothes at a prayer meeting. Do you take off all? Does anybody else take off all your clothes at a prayer meeting? No. But when you are in secret, you do that. Is that not so? Yeah. Anybody who has not learned how to pray alone for hours in secret for God to spy you with a telescope and see you secretly praying will never learn the blessing of being rewarded openly, publicly by God. Don't criticize people whom you see God blessing. There are often secret things they are doing that you don't see and that you don't know. And because they keep doing those secret things, God keeps on rewarding them openly and publicly. And then people say, ah, he's blessed. Oh, oh, ah, look at what they are doing. Ah, look at the promotion and the blessing and the increase. And the blessing keeps coming. And the increase keeps coming. And the blessing keeps coming because, and it keeps coming open. Everybody sees it. Look at her, she's getting married. Look at him, he's got a new car. Look at him, he seems to have a new contract. Look at her, she's traveling again. Look at her. She's become a pastor. Look at the church. The church is growing openly. God rewards you time and time and time again because you believe and you pray secretly. So there are, there are two types. There are those who don't pray at all. 
And then there are those who come and pray in public. And from today, we'll come for prayer meeting again. No, I did not say that prayer meetings are not good. There is a time to have a prayer meeting. Amen. The Bible says, call for a public assembly. But if you want God to take you up personally, learn, you and God. Not even you and your wife. Me and my beloved, one day I saw somebody at this bed. You and your beloved, you are praying. You are thinking more than praying. <laughs> thinking more than praying. Sometimes I see people say they are beloveds, they have gone for a prayer meeting. I said, my friend, don't bring yourself at all. You are thinking and imagining things that are not real. Prayer in secret. Miracle working prayer in secret. Pastor, I don't have time. You have time for what you want. In secret. Me and my God. In secret. Now God takes you up openly. Then he starts to bless you. Openly. Outwardly. And people are always jealous. You know, people always have a reason. People want to explain you away. When, when, when they see God blessing you, they, they say, oh, he's a thief. Oh, he's stealing the church money. They even say to their children, my, my children in school, you know, have children, other children in school, coming to tell them that your father is a thief. He steals the offerings. That's children. Talk like that to my children. People always want to explain you away. and They, all, they always want to find a reason to just equalize you. And, is he not Joseph's son? I know he's carpenter. You know, we know his background. And they want to explain you away. But you cannot explain away God's reward. Because when God rewards you, nobody can subtract from it. It's a blessing. You can't take it away. You may, you may speak against, you may criticize, you may, fight, you may not like it. But you can't explain. You can't throw it away. It's there. God has openly and publicly decided to reward you for the private and secret prayers you have been offering in your room. Oh man, only God sees those prayers. And only God knows those prayers. And he himself will reward you openly. So, so don't, don't, don't criticize people who seem to be blessed. You know, I, I, I don't know why people want to criticize. You see somebody who is getting married. And like, eh, I know she has been sleeping with him. Oh, why? Why, why, do, why are you full of bad things? Why are you full of bad things? Eh, he was somebody's beloved and she went for it. She was just doing some things and then in the end he saw, he saw her and then, but it's not actually her, her beloved. Why? Why, oh superfly? Why are you worried about somebody's blessing? Why do you want to equalize everybody's blessing? Why do you want to neutralize it? Why do you want to say a bad thing? Oh, I know where it comes from. Oh, if you go and see that, it's just a latest uh, something that he got and he has chopped inside. No, no. He's smuggling cocaine. No, why? Why? Why is your mind full of evil and negative things? Why, 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 why? You will never prosper if you have such an attitude because you are always criticizing rich people, successful people, people who are blessed. You are always constantly speaking against them. And so because of that, God, that thing cannot come to you. Listen, something you attack, you cannot have. I, I think I've told you before, I'll tell you again. I had a cat. I brought a little cat because our next door neighbors at Oso, I saw them having their cats and their cats were very wild. The cats were scared of them. They used to catch, there were so many, they used to catch them in sacks every few months. There were so many. And there was a, there was a special man who used to come. I think he eats them. He used to come and catch them and take them away. They would bring him to come and catch. So, you know, I, I thought to myself, I, I was beginning to hear some rats moving in my, in my ceiling. And I said, Lord, what medicine can I use? And I, if I give the medicine, they will die. And I said, I need a cat. And then I thought, let me get a cat. That will be my friend. So I got a little, beautiful little kitten. And I decided to befriend the cat and be friends with it and be nice to it. I didn't want to kick it. I didn't allow them to kick. Don't kick my little kitty cat. Because one day I'm going to need my kitty cat. I'm going to need my kitty cat to come to me so that I can put my little kitty cat in the ceiling to eat the mice. And so I kept being kind to it and not attacking it and not saying bad things. And when I said, hey, get away. No, I didn't say bad things about it. 
I didn't say it was an evil, smelly cat. I didn't say it was a bad thing. I didn't say it was a child. I just, I just said, boop, boop. Just make some sound. Gradually, it grew up. And I was listening to the rats that were moving around. I was saying, your days are numbered. I have a new friend. I said, I have a new friend. I, I decided not to attack him. I decided not to say bad things again. So he's now my friend. So one day I said, open the ceiling. And I put my own, I call her Queen of Sheba, put her in there. And I said, go, sister, go. <laughs> Would you believe it? I don't have any mice anymore. Easy, because I've got a friend at home who takes care of all those things for me. I didn't attack her when she was young, when I didn't know about I, I just nurtured friendship. And gradually, so she would come. So now even I can pick her up. So wild cat, but I can pick her up. You keep on attacking riches. The riches say, Then one day you say, I need you. Say, oh no, we are afraid of you. We don't want you in our life. You are not going to come to us. People who criticize. They cannot, you, you look in the history books of Ghana. Where well, rich people arrest them, kill them. Years have gone by. You needed the same riches for yourself. After killing the people who had loans and houses and whatnot, cars, you grew up and you found out that you also need their car. And you also need a house. And you also need a loan. Just like anybody else. What you attack one day, it will be difficult for it to come to you. And when it even comes to you, it's just like it doesn't fit. So there are some people, prosperity doesn't fit on them easily. <laughs> when they are even blessed, it's like they, they shouldn't be black. They said so many things. That's why some people can't come to the church. They said so many things about the church. And now that they realize they need God, and they need a church, and they need a pastor, you said so many bad things about me. You are surprised that you are sitting in church today. And when you can't, you don't want anybody. When they ask you, what church do you go to? Say, colleague or no? <laughs> you, you can't say lighthouse because of your big mouth. So keep your big mouth shut now about blessings that God has in store for you for the future so that you don't drive them away from your life. Amen. Amen. So pray secretly. Secretly. And the reward is going to come big time. Amen. Everybody will see you and say, oh, God has blessed him. Yeah, really. Sometimes when I see my father-in-law, I, I look and say, oh, God has blessed. 83 years old. You see, that's an open reward. That's what, I, that's what I call it. 83 years old. Strong man. He's well. He's rich. He's prosperous. He could build a house for me today. He's building houses now at the age of 83. Some of us are the age of, um, <laughs> at the age of 30 something, you, you, you can't build anything. I remember recently he bought uh, some cars, Mercedes Benz, E Class, and so on. 80 year old man. He just bought, oh, give me one new one. <laughs> That's all. Some of you, the way things are going, I don't know how it will be when you are 50. <laughs> God has given him long life. I don't see him in any hospital. I see all his children are blessed, growing, blessed. He has his wife. 80 something. He's going to be 90. He's strong. You see him walking like that. He's going to the site. He's going to the site. And some of you are getting retired already. <laughs> That's open reward. That's what I call it. Everybody can see that you are blessed. That's what I mean by God will reward you openly. Everybody can see that you are blessed. In the year 2002, I predict and I prophesy that as the year comes to the end, everybody will see that, oh man, oh man, God has blessed this young man and this young lady. I want you to have a wedding so that when you come to the altar, what song do they sing when you are coming? 
Here come the bride, all dressed in white. I want people to be thinking. You know when you come to everybody is thinking something else? I want them to be thinking, she's blessed too. But I don't want them to be thinking, this marriage will be a suspect bar. <laughs> The guy, the, the thing doesn't fit. It's somebody for something. There are so many complex things. Ah, this marriage. Now, I want them to be thinking, oh, she's so blessed. She's so, look at who she's getting married to. I want them to say to themselves, oh, man. I don't want them to be thinking, that, ah, this is somebody's husband. Huh, this thing. I'm giving them two years. No, I don't want people to be thinking. I want them to be thinking, oh, God has been good to her. Hallelujah. And then him too. I don't want him to, people to be thinking, huh, the guy, he does, he's in for fire. Fire will burn him. He doesn't know her. He doesn't know what he's going in for. I want people to think, oh, he's being rewarded. God is rewarding him. God is rewarding him. For what? I don't know. For maybe either for the giving Maybe for the God. God said he will reward you openly. He didn't say how. He said he will reward you openly. The prayer, God will reward you openly. You'll see God rewarding you outside on the open. Everyone will see he's being blessed. Amen. And finally, 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 10, 10 again, Matthew 6, finally, verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, not if you fast, some people like to say, and fasting is past. No, no, no. He said, when you fast, not if you fast, when you fast. When you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, are we fasting this year? How many days? How many days have gone by? Two days have gone by. We are left with 48 more days. Every Friday, the whole church is fasting. Don't say you don't know. I didn't know. I wasn't there when they made the announcement. Okay, you are here now. Verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, be not as a hypocrite of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is where? Where is your father again? In secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee where? Openly. This is another open reward for fasting in secret. Fasting, Kobe. Fasting. God. So if you don't know the use of fasting, we've read it here. God rewards openly. I don't know how. But somehow there's some reward for fasting. So it's just a good thing to fast. So every week we are fasting on Friday. I don't know what I am. Just fast on Friday. Now you got fast. Fast. Pray. Give. These three, they are things you must do in secret. And I predict and I promise that God will take you up in the open. I said he will take you up openly. How many want God to pick you up openly? How many want God to take you up publicly? And make a show of prosperity using you Hallelujah. as an example. How many want God to use you as a demonstration of prosperity? As a demonstration of happiness? As a demonstration of marriage? As a demonstration of peace? As a demonstration of joy? God will take you up openly. You just do these secret things. Instead of doing bad things in secret. <laughs> I said instead of doing bad things in secret. Let us do these good things in secret. Can I have an amen? amen. Can I have an amen? amen? Fast on Friday. Don't tell the whole world. You know our church, we are fasting. We are fasting on Fridays. Every Friday. Sis to sis. Sis to sis, we are fasting. No. Just fast. And find time to pray. Amen. Don't let the whole world know. You see, the reason why I've not done my hair is because of her. <laughs> the first year, the first year has affected my hair on Fridays. <laughs> no, 
now. Just fast. And the reason why I was late is because I was, I was praying. I was praying. See, usually I pray for two hours. I usually pray for two hours, and then after that, I, uh, I usually fast on Wednesdays and Fridays. <laughs> no, no. Just, just decide to do the things. So, uh, this, um, uh, yeah, last week they were doing a uh, disinfant raising at my church, and then I gave um, uh, this um, 200,000. And when I gave the 200,000, I was, um, I know that God Himself has seen all these things I've done. And I'm very, very grateful to God for His rewards that He's given to me because uh, 200,000 is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no need for you to talk about it. Just give it. I said, just give it. Just give it. You know, people who pray a lot, they can easily become proud. There is a pride that comes from praying a lot. You want people to know. So, this pastor, and I said, you know, uh, this is, <laughs> pastor, <laughs> pastor, he doesn't pray. <laughs> we have been supporting him. <laughs> If, if, we weren't, if, we were, if we were not there, I don't know what would happen in this church. No, the, there's a certain pride that comes from praying. Sometimes you, you pray too much and then, not that you pray too much, you pray and then you become proud of your activity. You can become proud of fasting, proud of prayer, proud of giving. All these things can make you proud. That's why he said, you do them quietly. Nobody knows. When you come with your ass, no one even knows what you did, what you gave, what you said. And God will take you up personally and publicly and he'll make a demonstration, use you as an illustration for blessing. And when people are giving examples of success, of blessing, they'll use you. You know, there was a time that Ethiopia was used as an example of uh, starvation. Is that not so? Yeah. You become, you become a byword, a proverb. People use you as an example of a curse. They use you and say, eh, this, that, eh, you see, that scripture that says that yeah, eh, eh, you will plant and you not reap. <laughs> you see that brother who, no. And they are using you as the example. No. But the example of someone who is blessed, then they will cause her. You see, you see that sister? Aha. Uh -huh. She was this, this, that, and then the Lord lifted her. And so that you become the illustration, the example. How many want to be used as an example? And if you don't take care, they will not only use you as an illustration, they'll use you as a joke. I remember one time somebody was saying that he went to uh, one of these countries, Ethiopia, whatever, and then he went to the lift. And then the lift says that uh, um, three, instead of, you know, you know, they write the weight on it, 320 kilos or four people. You get it? Because one person should weigh about 80 kilos. And he said, although they are written in the lift, and it was an Ethiopian lift, they had written 320 kilos of 40 people. Oh. You, you get what I'm trying to say? In other words, uh, the people there are very light. <laughs> they are very light, so the, the lift takes a lot of people. Instead of, uh, instead of uh, four people, it can take up to 40. <laughs> because one person in that country is very light. You get it? It's not a good thing to be used as a joke. Amen. And then the same person continued and he was saying that in, uh, in that country, you know, the prison bars, you know, they don't have the bars like this. They have to have the bars like this. But if the bars are like this, the people will just walk to the bars. <laughs> and, and, and then you begin to be used as an illustration, as an example. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But God does not want to use you as an example of bad things. I see God using you as an example of mega things, as an example of prosperity, as an example of open reward, as an example of promotion in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and thank the Lord that this year you are going to experience his promotion. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus for your word to heal us, to bless us to establish us 
in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet as we close this service. Father, we thank you for your word today. We know, Lord, that you are great and above all things, above all power, above all, above everything, Lord, and that you are able to reward us openly. Use us as examples of blessed, blessed people, uh, successful people, people who are healed, people who are delivered, people who have the grace of God on their lives. Thank you, Father, in Jesus. Lift up your hand and just pray for the grace to do the secret things in secret to do the things you need to do. Decide from today, Lord, I'm going to do these secret things. I'm going to give. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do these things in secret. And I know you will take me up, Lord, outside. You will lift me up outside where all men can see. You will lift me up and promote me, Lord. You will bless me, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallowed be thy name. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Please pray with me. I want to be born again. God bless you. If you are here like that and you want to give your life to Jesus, because you cannot pray unless you are born again. You want to say, Pastor, somebody invited me to your church today, but I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. If you are here like that, lift up your right hand and I'm going to pray with you. Lift it up high. God bless you. Pastor, please pray with me. I want to give my life to God today. I came to church today, but I want to give my life to Jesus. Please pray with me. Lift it up high. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see all your hands. Wonderful. I see all your hands this morning. As your hands are lifted up, I want you to come to me in the front here. Just come from where you are standing. Come from the side. Come from the back. Come from the aisles. Come from wherever you are. Come to me right here. Jesus is calling you today. Come to Jesus. You must be born again. God bless you. Clap for them as they come to the Lord. Clap for them as they come to the Lord. If you lifted up your hand, just walk to me in the front here. God bless you. 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 Oh, put your hands together for them. As they put your hands together for them as they come to the Lord. Mando Kabarala Masombolo Murandele. Oh, yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Come, come to the front. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. I want to give my life to Jesus. Please pray with me. I want to be born again. Somebody invited me to your church, but I know that I don't know God. I want to know Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Come to the front. Pastor, please pray with me. I don't want to go to hell. When I die, I want to go to heaven. Please pray with me. I want my name to be written in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. If you want to join them, come quickly. Pastor, please pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. All of you in front here, just lift your hands and close your eyes and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Right now, I've decided to follow you I realize that I don't know you please wash me in the blood of Jesus from today I will follow you I receive Jesus right now into my heart to be my savior to be my master oh God please wash me in the blood in the blood of Jesus from today, I am yours. Jesus, I am yours. I will follow you. I will obey you. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen.